Hello, everyone. Today is Sunday, April 9th, 2023 at 8.14 a.m. in the morning. So, I think, yeah, I got here Thursday the 6th, right? Friday the 7th. Yeah. So, in the middle of the night was the, the um... It was, I guess, it's, and it still wasn't that great, but it was the best sleep that I got, you know, I guess for the past couple of weeks, really, but um, it was the best sleep that I got since being in here, you know. So I had to be overclothed, you know. I had to bundle up with my hoodie and sweatpants and socks and everything um, under the covers and try to just bundle up and try to get warm. And I um, had to turn off the so-called air conditioner. I don't know why they don't have heater with it, but... um. So, well, it's like, I'm coming in here to try to lay back in the bed. This room is dark if I don't turn the light on. I ain't going to worry about turning on the light. But um, I'll just come and lay in the bed and relax. I mean, lay down. So... I thought I tried to go to bed before midnight, but I ended up not falling asleep or until like after two o'clock, or may- maybe after one thirty in the morning. My hips hurt, so I can't celebrate Easter today. And even if I believed in it, I still couldn't celebrate. Because I damn sure don't have any money. And how do you celebrate so-called Easter by yourself anyway? So, um. So, pardon me, you know, with the, um. You know, with the feuding and drama with narc-ass phony. Because, um. As I said, he went back to harassing me for no reason, unprovoked. And I haven't been bothering him. And um, so it's it's like he's talking a lot of double talk. <clears throat> so um, I woke up in the middle. Of, I mean, I woke up this morning with him making more harassing, lying community posts about me. So that's what prompted me to do the video talking about how, you know, because I went through it with fake friend, other fake friends and um, family members, especially my twin sister and roommates, co-workers, whatever. If you get into an argument with an abusive narcissistic perp or a fake T.I. perp, they will keep on saying lies to manipulate you to continue to defend yourself. You know, they'll make you to try to have to continue to defend yourself and correct their lies. And nobody's listening to you and it's like you're wasting your breath telling the truth. But, well, other people, it'll be like you're wasting your breath because that pe- that, the flying monkeys and everybody else already have their minds made up to defend and agree with the narc while you while you made to look like the fool and look crazy or whatever. So um you know I just wish that he would stop mentioning me or stop putting my name in community posts and you know stop bullying and harassing me when I'm not even doing you anything. So um as I said the perps it's it's like He's probably harassing me to get some more perp money because 
he condemned me for trying to get out of the cold and try to survive. But now he, it's okay. As I showed y'all, he's hypocritically begging, you know, and he's copying what the regular perps do word for word, lying and saying that I squander money donated to me or I squander my social security money or that I'm scamming and lying about being disabled and stuff like that. I, I've been disabled for years. So, um, you don't even know the truth about me. And then, you know, it seems like he knows enough about me that it's obviously been stalking me, you know? So, um, <clears throat> so, I mean, he's been stalking, harassing, bullying, and terrorizing me. But I mean, it's like, I thought you said you got into a car accident. How, how did you get your car fixed or, or got your car running again? That you got you begging for gas money and food and money for um, you know if you if you lying and say oh I'm about to be homeless soon and I'm I'm gonna next month and I'm gonna prove it. Why do you feel the need to boast and puff yourself up about trying to prove everything when narcissistic abusers like to give false proof and draw false conclusions so that they can further their manipulation and abuse? It's not even real. But, you know, I'm, I want to stop, you know, wasting my breath on him and just, you know, I just got here and can't even enjoy, um, you know, can't even rest or relax and enjoy my new place, you know? So it's like he's throwing stones and darts at me to try to manipulate me to, I mean, he's trying to get a reaction and trying to manipulate me into responding, you know? And so every time I defend myself against narcissistic fake TI perps and regular perps, it's like, I always end up losing subscribers and losing support. And then, you know, it makes me even suffer even harder. So, you know, I don't even want to talk about him no more. You know, you just go your way and I go my way and just leave me the hell alone. Stay away from me. You know, so. um, <clears throat> So he wants to give false proof that he's not a perp, but he's doing everything perpish. So. I know what he's doing and. I know when you sold out. I know when a when a fake TI perp when they sell out and stuff and they you know they start acting like a perp but they still gain favoritism with the so-called TI community. And what as I say when other professed targets don't even they act like they don't have discernment and they don't even recognize when and, and they're afraid to speak up. When somebody's popular and fake with so much power they're afraid to publicly speak up against um, the fake TI perps that sold out. And it's obvious. So, um, it's not even like really super important or that big, you know, that you're making a big deal out of me. You, you know, so, um, So, I mean, I don't know. It's like Knox love to pretend to go out of their way to pretend to be fake self-righteous and pretend that they're do-gooders and righteous people or good people. And, and they're dirty. And they reverse it on you and lie and say that you're the crook and you're the dirty person. So, um... <clears throat> So as I said, you know, I can't even relax up in here, resting from a long two day trip. You know, they had me on out on the streets in freaking Cincinnati where it's colder, and they had, I mean, a couple of days out on the streets, I almost rolled over and died. I almost froze to death. But y'all don't care. Y'all are reprobating stone cold. And don't even care about that. 
And then y'all be the first to fake regret the way you treated me when I was alive and now I'm dead. And all of a sudden you got your outpouring fake sympathy and flowers and stuff like that. Don't come hyper, don't come hyperventilating over my casket when I'm dead at my funeral, knowing that you did me all kinds of X, Y, Z kind of dirty. And y'all be the first to be like, oh, Candy was a good person. Motherfucker, stop it. Stop it. Y'all always with the fake show-offs at the funerals, but then a natural cry, y'all want to y'all want to force people to shut up at funerals. Why? Because y'all want the fake charade and fake show by yourselves. And y'all the type of narcissistic abusers that sit there and laugh at funerals. Y'all sit there and laugh at your own family members' funerals or shit like that. I mean, and then y'all sitting there laughing the whole, instead of people crying, y'all sit there laughing and making fun of how they looked in the casket the whole damn time. That's your damn brother. That's your sister. That's your grandma. And you sitting there nitpicking and laughing and about how they looked in the casket. You know, get mad at the um the mortician who made up your, your deceased um family member, lover, friend, whatever. But you you sitting there, I mean, you sitting there laughing at how they look in the casket, like as, as if they painted their own face after they died and then threw themselves in the casket. Like what the hell? Like So I got my own family members who like to laugh at and make fun of how a person looked in a casket. Like my biological nephew, Raymond, he exposed the biological sister, Ramona, saying that Ramona likes to run to strangers' funerals and, and then just so she can come and come back home and make laugh at and make fun of how they looked in a casket. So Ramona got mad that she was forced to have to move to the Night Ward. She wanted to worship and idolize the Seventh Ward because that's where all the death is and all the murders and stuff. <clears throat> and it's like, I never heard of my own biological sister and I never heard of so anybody so sick that they just enjoy being surrounded by death. What the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, yesterday was her criminal, illegal, satanic, fraudulent birthday. You know, so um, even Anthony tried to make remarks, trying to falsely accuse me of being incestuous, and then talking about, and then threw it in my face, talking about yo, yeah, your incestuous family or whatever. So um, if you know professed targeted individuals or real targeted individuals are blacklisted, why would you falsely lie on me and say that I'm lazy and don't want to work? If you've been stalking all my activity, I'm pretty sure I, you saw those job rejections. Even though I am disabled. So, um, <clears throat> so I mean, he been, he been saying a lot of stuff that want to, you know, trying to trigger me and get underneath my skin. And, um, he's not, he don't even have all his facts straight. You know, but stop pretending you're a victim of narcissistic abuse when you're doing it to other people. So, um, <clears throat> I'm gone away from my family. So, it ain't me that's freaking incestuous and weird. <clears throat> so, um, you know, because my mentally slow, crazy biological family, they're mentally all slow and retarded and don't know no better. So, um, I'm at more peace by myself without them. Without, you know, fake family, fake friends, you know, it's, and I used to cry and feel hurt about not having friends. But if every friend that I have got to be bossy and controlling and won't let me with the with freedom, 
that I would rather just stay by myself. You know, I'm glad to be alone. So, um, so yeah, last night before bed, I didn't floss, but I brushed my teeth with, um, <clears throat> I twisted the pink Himalayan salt. I twisted it like 15 times. And then I also added um, well, probably two big pinches of baking soda. And I mixed it in a little bit of water and brushed my teeth with it. And the pain and inflammation went away a little bit. But the coconut oil and slash or bentonite clay... Um, it seems like it takes the pain and inflam takes the pain and inflammation away more effectively. And um what else was I gonna say? <clears throat> yeah, it takes the pain and inflam inflammation away more effectively. But um but yeah, they are making me um, lose my train of thought. <clears throat> but I discovered that it seems like if I brush my teeth with something natural before bed, I end up being able to sleep better. I discovered that when I had the temp job in 2021. <clears throat> so um so so I mean but I guess it's more effective when I floss as well. You know, I was so tired last night. But, you know, I'm sitting here dealing with depression, dealing, suffering depression <clears throat> due to the, mainly the online harassment got me all depressed and everything from all the online perps or whatever. So, um, I hope to get to achieve, you know, taking another bath or, I mean, no, I, a shower because I can't take a bath bath, but shower you know i hope i can get to take a shower <clears throat> but um so i hope i get to take a shower and um i don't know if the laundromat is open but um Yeah, if I need to go out and about tomorrow, I need to wash the other outfit. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, I guess since I'm here, <clears throat> I need to get more clothes, but don't have really the money to buy new clothes or get more clothes. So this week, you know, since I got, since I just got here, I got more business to handle. I mean, I got business to handle, you know, we're trying to get stuff straightened out and trying to figure stuff out. Um, you know, <clears throat> and so, um, So, I mean, I got stuff, I mean, so, you know, as I said, I need, I still need financial donations myself, you know, for transportation, the driver's license, and um, 
you know, transportation, the driver's license, and the um, P.O. box. And because here, I, I don't, I mean, here, the the bus doesn't come here, but they got some kind of rural thing I need to ask about. And here, the buses don't run on Sundays. The buses don't run on Sundays. So you suck out of luck on Sundays. So, um, yeah, I, I got to figure stuff out. So, but, um, so last night I brushed my teeth, but the tooth abscess swelling didn't really go down with the baking soda and salt. It didn't really go down like it would have if I would have used the bentonite clay or if I would have used the um the coconut oil. It's like, oh, you feel like so much relief. <clears throat> so um I'm halfway out of the bentonite clay, so I gotta ration it. Ration what I have. And um, I'm, I mean, since I'm here, you know, if I can get the P.O. box, you know, I probably can be, you know, ordering because they don't have a vitamin shop out here, I don't think. So, you know, I definitely would need a car. But, um... Either that or I just have to just stay stuck in that, stuck in this little place, you know, stay stuck here. <clears throat> stuck here, not going really anywhere, but I'm an insider anyway. I don't go, get out much, but, you know, but, um. You know, as I say, I'm still, you know, trying to get help with totally getting back on my feet. I mean, I got the first step with getting this place and, um, you know, trying to get help with, you know, the transportation, the travel to get my business handled. And um, as I said, once I'm settled, then... I'm probably still going to have to ask for help when needed if I don't have a job. But other than that, <clears throat> I might have to still continue to ask for help because, um, you know, I mean, as I said, next month, if I'm already settled and got my food stamps rolling and everything like that, if I got the food stamps rolling, I mean, I'm going to let y'all know if they if they give me a problem or deny me or do something, you know, so, um, or even with the Social Security, I'll let y'all know. So, um, <clears throat> so it's like they want to try to ruin everything. So, I mean, but if I get only $15 at food stamps, what's that going to do? You know, but yeah, usually even when I was living in Denton, Texas years ago, I think I was getting like 150 something dollars a month. And then Louis, New Orleans, my whole time, I was getting 194 So... Um, yeah, I need to go, <clears throat> I, I'm saying that I need financial donations and help with the transportation and also to go to the DMV and get the driver's license switched over. And I, you know what? I don't know if 
the lady, one of the late, several ladies that work at the front desk, if that was by accident or on purpose, if she put east instead of west. Now, I actually live on west. I'm not going to say the name. Um, street. So, but she put east on the on the so-called rental agreement. She put east instead of west. <laughs> so, um, tomorrow I got to go get that straightened out. So I got to think of today to try to prioritize the business that I need to handle this week, you know, and I still got to get taxes done. Still haven't been able to, and I hope I could, I hope there are slots for me to make an appointment. Like, when I was in, like, when I was in, um, you know, I, w I already got to Cincinnati. Like, I was in Pensacola. And, you know, I was going through all that targeting. And I didn't get all my documents until, I guess, after I moved to Cincinnati, got to Cincinnati. And I finally got, like, all the tax returns and stuff because it was after the 31st. So I finally got the tax returns. So I gathered the information but if, if I'm sitting here waiting around for jobs here and there and um, I try to see about the walking opportunities but it would be too cold for me to even get outside too cold for me to even get outside and they kept on saying like for the appointments they were saying that all the slots were full and this and that or whatever. So I figured I would try to do a walk-in, but every time I tried, it was way too cold on a Saturday. Like, too cold to even go outside. So I have only a short period of time left. And, like, what are they, what are they going to do if they got these appointments and... If they don't have any slots, then what? You know, they got to fit somebody. They got to fit us in somewhere. So, um. <clears throat> but as I said, I don't trust doing my own um, tax return all, online because I, I just have this fear that I might mess it up or it might not be done right. So I want to make sure it's done right in, in person, you know, trying to get the free tax return, th the tax thing done, you know. <clears throat> so, I mean, I'm sitting here struggling to survive and everything. And this year, we're not going to get the big, um, you know, we got a bigger payment last year but this year <clears throat> I think um yeah I mean if they wouldn't have workplace mobbed me off the job I could have had a bigger tax return that's so fucked up you know but yeah I'm probably gonna be getting crumbs but also I think they said you had to go in person in order to get the um the, you know, see about what tax credits you can qualify for. You know, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I was. So, uh, if you if you get like low income or whatever, and you're supposed to qualify for certain tax credits, but if you do the self thing online. I tried it, and if you tr do it online, that's, then you don't get the tax credits that you would if you were in, in person. I don't know. I might as well just try to do it online. I don't know. Hmm. So, 
and, and they're making it like they kept on having these weird loopholes and hurdles to prevent me when I even tried to do the tax returns on, I tried to do the taxes online and it was just, um, hindering me and making things difficult. I don't know if it was part of the gang stalking or what, but I got to go in person and get this done. I, you know, I got to go in person and try to get this done. And so they're very limited here in this town. They are very limited. Um, they're very limited with the, um, with the days and everything. Um, and then the time is almost up. Like April 18th is the last day. And that day is almost next week, you know? <clears throat> so I got one week to, to be able to do this. So they got to fit me in somewhere, you know? So... I would need help with transportation with that too. So I'm living, I guess, in a rural area. And for this to be so rural, I think that um, it's strange that there's so such high traffic on this street. If it's a rural area, it's such high traffic for loud music, loud trucks, loud gang stalking. And it's like not normal. I don't even know if they strategically put me on the, on the edge right here on purpose with all, like all the traffic and noise. I don't know if they put me here on purpose or if this was the only spot left. I don't know. But, um, but I have a right to um, expose gang stalking. And, and when you say that people are doing stuff to you, it's not complaining when you do it. So you, because you mad at me, you want to bully me, you expect me to not expose my targeting or complain about the perps. While you complain about yourself being targeted, but then you bully and perp and harass. So I'm going to say it like Anthony must be that desperate for money that he's perping me in exchange to get the things he feel like he needs to get. If you need money that bad and the only way to do it is to perp. And so that might explain the random out of nowhere harassment for no reason. <clears throat> so, um, So, <clears throat> you know, as I said, me being targeted, I can't even try to accumulate too much, you know. I got two beds in here, and but it doesn't look like I, I have any space for a sofa, and I'm not even going to try to get a sofa. I'm fine with the beds. I'll use my bed as a sofa. So, um, I don't need a sofa. I'm not trying to get a sofa. Um, but I, it's like, I, I can use, I can sit on a bed and eat. I don't have to worry about a table, you know? So me having a bachelor's degree, <clears throat> um, me being disabled and forced low income all my life. And I remember, you know, never really get to live, have a bed. Um, the time I did get a bed, it was right before Hurricane Katrina when I finally got a bed. But when I was living in New Orleans Towers, I bought a, a, a sofa. It was a dirty sofa and I sprayed and sanitized it. Like I disinfected it with the Lysol spray, lots of it. And I bought it for $5 and I had hell with trying to get it dragged over to my apartment. And eventually I had some men had helped me, but I draped like a blanket or, or something 
but you know, I spent many of my adulthood years. I mean, I think that was, yeah, I had the sofa there, but, um, you know, unless somebody donated or whatever, I I would had to spend a lot of my adulthood, you know, with a place to live, you know, if somebody donated me a table or some, you know, that was great. But a lot of the times I had to live with, even in Denton, Texas, I had to live with, um, sleeping on a futon, which will break after a week or so, you know, and then when the futon frame, frame breaks, I would end up having to sleep on the, um, I would have to sleep on a, um, on a futon mattress on the floor for many years. But in Los Angeles, that abusive, manipulative, fake Jehovah's Witness cult lady, Geneva Hildreth, elderly, she lives in Inglewood, got a four bedroom house all to herself, four bedroom, four bathroom house all to herself in Inglewood. And she was manipulative, controlling, and a coercive perp. And, um, you know, and that's not what narcissistic abusers do. It's like, especially ghetto narcissistic abusers, if they want to give you something you don't ask for, give you something you didn't ask for and then force you to accept it and then turn around and hound you down and bully you saying you owe them money. So, um, you know, <clears throat> that lady was very manipulative even in her 80s. Even in her 80s, she was very manipulative. And um, an abusive, narcissistic, fake Jehovah's Witness perp. She was part of the fake Jehovah's Witnesses cult, and they and they're strange, you know. So um, she forced shoved all this furniture in my house, and then hounded me down years later. She was supposed to be the landlady, but Sam Barreta was the actual owner, but she was the one who got me in the place, but she wanted to make like, I owe her something in return. She forced shoved all this damn furniture in my house. So like, you gotta, you have to have furniture and all that. Like, but then she wanted to have her hand out for money. She didn't even say, well, I'm charging you such and such. They would try to force you to accept it when you don't want it. Or, um, you know, don't offer me something and then have your hand out for money and then force me to take it and then won't allow me to say no and refuse. <clears throat> so, um, even other neighbors has, before they became perps, you know, they said she was a pain in the ass, you know, an asshole, you know, but I heard neighbors telling me that Sam Barretta was um doing weird stuff or ch or trying to make sexual advances, and I'm like, well, I didn't know Mr. Sam to be like that. You know, uh, he lives in Linwood, California. And he has that, his brother-in-law, Carlos, that he works with. Yeah, Sam and Carlos, they're both perps. They didn't used to be a perps in the beginning. So when one of my neighbors, Miss Tammy or whatever, married, and it's like, well, how is Mr. Sam married to Sandra Barretta? And you're married to Ron Burnham. And then y'all sit there and um, 
it's like I was shocked when she told me that Mr. Sam was trying to manipulate her and make sexual advances at her. And I'm like, well, Mr. Sam ain't married to you. Why? I'm like, I'm like, well, and then later on, Mr. Sam started making sexual advances at me. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, Mr. Sam, I think that, as I said, Mr. S and, and Miss Geneva Hildred, I call her Hovey Hags as a nickname because she's part of elderly and part of that fake Jehovah's Witnesses cult, you know. So I had the nickname Hovey Hags for her. So, um, so she sit there and, um, she even said that Sam isn't a money hungry person. But, you know, it, like, I was, when I first got to my place in Los Angeles for at least a year, I was able to live in peace and got along with my neighbors. And they used to love me. But then as I noticed that um, subtle and slowly but surely, they started to do weird shit. And I used to be staring out my own window all the time and I didn't realize that they were all gang stalkers I'm like y'all ain't got nothing better else to do where are y'all jobs but I didn't realize they were all perps and every time I opened my window they would light up a cigarette and smoke start smoking cigarettes and bringing friends over and then um whenever I would close the window then they would they would scatter like roaches and be gone and I wasn't financially fortunate enough to be able to have a smartphone and record all, everything that they do. But I remember what they did, you know, and I don't know who it was. You know, they did a lot of perp shit in Los Angeles. Now, I, I, that I, they figured I was too slow to catch on to. <clears throat> like, you know, they used to open and tamper with my mail. Um, they used to go in and out of my gate and break my gate when they had their own, and they even took the took the knob off the gate, and and the landlord didn't care, and um, and let's see what else. Yeah, they would break into my house every day. Every day when I'm gone to the library and leave the door wide open and um, they would leave dead smushed birds on a, like one time I saw a dead smushed bird or if it wasn't that, it was animal shit, like dog shit on my, um, on my front porch. And um, the the landlord and the neighbors used to dump all their trash into my trash bin on purpose to make my trash to have to be like three or four times more expensive. And um, the landlord never allowed me to have water hot enough. They were poisoning my water that at eleven after eleven o'clock at night if I needed to drink water there would be white or black particles in the water and the water would taste, taste like straight up fucking bleach. The water would taste like straight up bleach. <clears throat> so, um, let, let's see what else they used to do. Yeah, I would go to sleep and then wake up with um <clears throat> with all my all my cabinets in the kitchen open. And um they used to electronically rape me, you know, whether it be anally or vaginally. You know, I didn't even know I was being hit with weapons and being electronically raped. And um, 
of course, the vibrating is what put the nail in the coffin. And while I was forced to break the lease and leave, and that, and they set me up and lied on me and ruined my credit when I was warning them and letting them know what was going on. But they were in on it. <clears throat> even the, um, even the Ronnie Jones lady from the um, Los Angeles, um, the Section 8 office. I think it was this. I don't remember if it was the city or county section eight. <clears throat> so um. So yeah, I had a lot of weird stuff going on. I had a lot of strange ass, you know, dream manipulation and nightmares. <clears throat> um. One time I had a nightmare that I was gang, like I was raped by a Freemason one time, you know, but some time later, I had a nightmare about being um, gang raped by a whole bunch of Freemasons in a dark room. And I had some other just weird nightmares, you know, disturbing and traumatizing so you know they made sure that and, and they kept on manipulating for the um the drains to be stopped up and blame it on me um they wouldn't fix the oven they wouldn't um they refused to fix the um when it was cold the landlord pretended that he would that he fixed the heater because it was a gas heater and then kept it cold. And so the landlord will ignore me when the smoke alarm would go off or, and I had to suffer being cold and he refused to fix the, um, he would refuse to fix the, um, you, you know, the heater. But before he became a perp, if anything I asked him, anything I needed, he was right there in a flash and would fix the problem immediately. So, you know, they would make up lies and falsely accuse me of putting soap down the tub drains and falsely accuse me of, um, you, you know, and it was, come to find out, it was them stopping up the plumbing and everything else. I had to deal with loud neighbors with loud noise harassment, noise campaigns, <clears throat> just everything loud, you know, dogs barking. Um, they will always do the fake, um, pretend like they're fixing on the house, like using an electronic saw or, um, or whatever, like is that they're, pretending that they fixed it on their house. They would rev up the car, vehicle engines. Um, every time I looked out the window, the, the LAPD police was always passing by. I was always surrounded by lots of police presence everywhere I went. And I can't think of everything else, but all the neighbors got compromised and turned into perps before my eyes. But see, I just got here at this place in Texas and it's not even dealing with friendly people. It's like, I just got here and they're perp perping already. You know, in the middle of the night, like two and three o'clock in the morning, no way in hell, in a rural Texas town, should there be high traffic at two o'clock in the morning, like as if it's three o'clock, the same kind of heavy traffic that that you would hear if it was three o'clock in the afternoon or, or kids getting off from school or five o'clock and people getting off from work. No way in hell should I hear that in the middle of the night in a rural town. And, you know, I get so many perps passing by with loud music, blasting, or a loud Silverado or four F-150 truck engines and V-8 engines and, and everything else. And all in the middle of the night. 
or whatever other loud cars, you know. So, <clears throat> so yeah, um, So, I mean, so, I don't know what else to talk about right now. So, um, yeah, I'll just try to go on about my day, but I have the donation information in the description box of just about all my videos. I kind of changed it around a little bit, but I'm not done yet. I've got to um, try to continue to, I mean, I got to finish, um, you know, rearranging what I needed to say, but I still need help. You know, people think that just because I'm settled, just because I got this roof over my head, then all my financial problems are go, gone away and I don't need help no more. But, you know, I just got here and I, I still need help. You know, so, um, I'm gonna go for now and, um, <clears throat> you, you know, it's very creepy what, what people are doing and you def sitting there defending and agreeing with, with evil. So, um, yeah, I mean, as I said, it may be the so-called Easter holiday or whatever, but yesterday I didn't spend any money at all, not a penny. And then today, if I don't do laundry, then no money will be spent, you know, with the little bit that I have. So... And I mean, I got a lot of business I need to do this week. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just, you know, but today I plan to work on more writing. But before I go, though, I wanted to say that, um, like last night after I brushed my teeth, my body felt the need to, it was working overtime to try to, to make up and compensate, I mean, compensate, overcompensate from the, um, lost sleep that I, you know, and it seemed like as if I thought I, it was one of those nights where I, I was wondering if my blood pressure was low because after brushing my teeth with the salt water, the salt and baking soda, I'm wondering, did I overdo it? Because I brushed my teeth with the, the night before and my body didn't have this effect. But, you know, my body tricked me into thinking that I needed to sleep hard. And my body was just feeling weird for about a good 20 minutes after I laid down, after I brushed my teeth. And then it felt like some electrical pulses going through my chest, my heart, and brain. It was kind of weird to explain. And then eventually, um, I only slept. I woke up about 6.30 and had to use the bathroom and been up ever since. So I guess I only got, I, I, like, I got up at 3 o'clock and had 3 something and had to use the bathroom. So my phone had been tripping and acting weird. And I'm like, oh, please, I can't afford another phone. You know, my phone, like I had to restart the phone like three or four times. So my phone is like breaking down on me. It's acting strange. So, um. My phone is breaking down on me at the strange and I can't afford a new one. 
It's not completely down now, but it's acting weird. So, um, so I want to work on some more writing today. I'm at least an author, y'all. I'm an author. I write. So, um, I want to work on some more writing today and, um, and just go on about my day, you know. But as I said, I, I just have enough food, enough up until tomorrow. Um, and then, you know, I guess after tomorrow, then I'm going to be foodless, you know, without food, you know. So I'm, you know, try to see what business I can handle, try to see what I can do. So, um, as I said, you know, a few of y'all have offered to send me care packages, but once I get the donations, I mean, I'm sorry, once I get the uh, PO box, if I can get the PO box, I, I'm going to try to, um, you know, maybe let y'all know privately if you have trusted person, you know, let you know privately what my um, P.O. box is. And if you want to send me a care package, um, you know, I'd be grateful and thank you so much, you know. So maybe I could gather a list of um, things that I need that I can't really access in person or physically that I, if I had the money, I would order online. So, I mean, if, if you got the affordability to do it, then, you know, I appreciate it. But at the same time, even though I'm blacklisted and dealing with workplace mobbing and stuff, and they don't want to allow me to, you know, you know, I'm just, I'm doing my end. I'm doing my part with filling out job doing my due diligence with filling out job applications. And if they don't accept me, then that's them. So, um, I'm trying my best and it's, and it's different. And it's like, if you don't believe anything I'm saying, then you are the dog on perp. <clears throat> so I'm going to get off here. And, um, you know, I'm going to try to just go on about my day, but <clears throat> I have um the information in the description box on ways y'all can support and help me out and everything. And, you know, I just want to be at doggone peace right now, you know. So I'm going to go for now and thanks and I'll um be updating y'all later on. <clears throat>